they send their truck down the road with the lights flashing and people and you phone up and you say, how, how are we going as a power company? And people go, oh, they're great, you know, the power's out and it's absolutely miserable out there, but you're trying to put it right. And so we know that people don't always expect things to be perfect, but they do expect you to put them right. Uh, we're trying to look and say, well, how do we actually relate that to society? So we're starting to say, well, should we have standards that say, within so many days of a big earthquake, you will have water? Uh, so people can start to think, you know what, I better have a bit of water stuck, tucked aside to, so we, they can start planning. Because what we've found is people are almost of a mindset of we expect it to always be there. Um, we now know that after earthquakes, uh, within two days of the Christchurch one with the roads, airports and rail lines being down, there was no hand sanitizer available in the South Island or in, in Christchurch. Plenty in the North Island, we just couldn't get it to them. And so we're starting to look and say, well, what do we actually need? What is uh, critical? Uh, just put New Zealand in context, so North Island, South Island, the West Island. Uh, that there is the same uh, tectonic plate ring, ring of fire that goes right around and comes back down through Vancouver. Uh, we're moving away from you at about two inches per year. That's why it takes me longer to fly there now than it did when I first came here. Uh, earthquakes, uh, Christchurch is about here. Um, that's the last 10 years. The notice before saying, although there's a few little earthquakes around, there weren't any big ones in that area. Uh, and if you look at it over here, it's virtually unheard of to have a big earthquake in Christchurch. If you look at the statistics for Vancouver, for Calgary, for Alberta, uh, Edmonton, you're pretty much the same. Uh, if you think of Rocky and your city sitting out here where we are, it's pretty much the same, same sort of statistic. Uh, since September of 2010, they've had 10,000, I think we just had 11,000 earthquakes. So the history represented nothing of the future. Major um, vertical um, accelerations, 100, 187 people died, I think, 160 in one building. Um, the thing was, after the first earthquake, everyone said, that was a big earthquake, we don't expect them around here. Oh, well, that's that done, we'll get on and rebuild it. Um, so it, they're only just getting back on their feet when the second one hit. Uh, put in context, 80% of the CBD buildings demolished, 60% uh, of the buried infrastructure is unusable, uh, and there's a whole lot of land which is now uninhabitable. So if you put that into a social context and you think about sustainable societies and what we, role we play, we're actually saying in places here that the infrastructure is so badly damaged that society can't actually go back there. So Central City is here, um, so CBD, our central business district, five miles by about half a mile is no longer being fit for habit, habit, habitation. Uh, those are areas where people live. Uh, so we're actually saying to people, uh, your entire society there is broken, government's stepping in and buying the houses, but no longer have you got your mum and dad living next door to look after the kids after school, you'll go and buy houses and be spread all over the place. So major societal impacts as a result of assets um, not actually being viable in the long term. We gain things, uh, that's how you mark a pothole, if it's really big. Uh, we gained urban uh, swimming pools, also known as roads, when the, ro when the land sinks by a couple of metres and ends up below where it should have been. Uh, urban art, quite interesting. Uh, we think if the roads are broken, uh, well, we'll just walk home. What if you can't walk? You know, we've, and we've learnt this whole interdependency of, you know, sometimes we all think, oh well, if I'm on the rail line, if the rail line broke, I just put things onto the road and drive around them. But if they're both broken, where do you go? Uh, power poles, some fell over, some sunk down. Uh, that's uh, a virtual connection. It works well if you've got Wi-Fi for data. It doesn't work so well if you're trying to put uh, water between. Uh, the issue there, that is the water supply for the local high security prison. What do you do with a couple of thousand high security prisoners when you lose your water supply and your rail, your road and your airport's closed? Very fundamental issues for society. And like I said, all the buried infrastructure suffered a huge amount of damage. Uh, any of you know the old, here is a church, here is a steeple, I'll open the doors, here's all the people sort of rhyme, here's our church, here's the steeple, we open the doors and uh, we're not going back there anytime soon. Uh, if you've ever been to Christchurch, there's only one building you ever actually photographed, Christchurch Cathedral, on Cathedral Square, dead centre of town, uh, that's how it was, that's afterwards and it's been uh, deemed unfit, can't be rebuilt so it's been demolished. Uh, quite an interesting issue around churches in terms of there are private 
sector entity, but a, sit in the public realm and the public value them. So you, we've ended up with ministers in the public protesting against the church, a very unusual situation. So um, responses from an asset management point of view, uh, we've moved from permanent repairs to just putting Band-Aid to keep things going. Uh, we've reduced service levels. So roads which were damaged and became rough and uh, too rough to travel at 100 kilometres per hour, we said, well, if we just reduce the speed limit to 70 or 50, we don't actually have to do anything. We can just reduce that service level. And of course, some places, the red zones, we've just said, you're not going back. Uh, we learnt that in the immediate aftermath, you know, in the minutes after a big earthquake, nobody actually goes, where's my asset management plan? People just sort of run for the door uh, and nobody's looking for their systems. But good asset management is really coming into play uh, in the weeks and months afterwards where those who actually knew what they were trying to do and had the good records can now actually go forward. Some of the issues that's coming out though, this is a pretty typical one. We have the, a road on a hillside, might be a little retaining wall here. You have your, your public infrastructure, be the water, stormwater, uh, and then you often have private, you know, it could be telecommunications, could be private gas. We're trying to figure out if the road agency isn't too fussed about their wall falling down, do they owe a duty of care to the private sector to actually say, well, how can the private sector's infrastructure be resilient, which is often still critical infrastructure for business and, uh, and even your everyday life, who's responsible? And also this one, uh, we, we've spent in places like in Wellington, tens of millions of dollars, probably even hundreds of million, making the motorway system a lot more resilient, but we know we've got great big buildings which in an earthquake will do that. So, you know, does the private sector owe a duty of care to the public sector? You know, we always have grandfather clauses saying we don't have to go back and make buildings stronger, but what do you do under that sort of scenario? So that's about all I wanted to cover. Well, it must be about uh, close to 15 yeah. minutes. Thank you very much, Ian. Uh, Bill and Dee, could you just take a chair up front for uh, just a moment as well? I just want to take half a minute uh, and just give an opportunity for the panelists themselves if they had any questions amongst themselves. Uh, we're going to take a short break in a few minutes, uh, but don't go away. Just grab a coffee in the back while we get our technology set up to bring our UK guest in. But I wondered if, if uh, between the panelists, we've, we've seen a, a lot of information uh, from an interesting tour in, in uh, Asia and, and uh, Southeast Pacific areas. Uh, if there was any immediate thoughts or questions you had amongst each other from what you heard your colleagues speak to. Bill. Uh, I want to go back to the uh, presentation on China. And what struck me, first of all, was the marvelous network that is being put together for transportation in China. Uh, you can see the growth of China and its uh, increases in gross national product following that route and increasing accordingly with high-speed rail. But what struck me was the high-speed rail network for coal, mm -hmm. which is admirable in terms of providing the fuel for the electricity. But aren't you condemning the China to be on a coal-produced electricity grid and therefore increasing climate change problems and other things? How do you react to that? What is, has China decided that coal is going to be its future electrical generation for the future? Maybe just uh, <laughs> you say electric is uh, maybe some problem. Um, in China, mm, here is in the state, uh, everyone know the S-curve of things, S-curve. Uh, there are three, we can divide it to three steps. The first step is start step. The second, uh, the rapid growth step, then uh, became stable uh, for things. Uh, now in China, here, uh, in, my, uh, in my opinion, uh, here China in the, uh, in the step of rapid growth, so there are a lot of problems. The, the folks on uh, the, the mainly, uh, they focus on core quantity. And the quality is uh, uh, such as the balance from the, just as you say, the electronic and the, 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 the transportation may be some problem. Maybe, but here we are in, the, in this state, so 
we must meet some some problems uh, such as things in my opinion there. Yeah. I'm not sure if any other panelists want to make a comment. Was there even I'll even open it here for a moment if there is any burning question from the audience before we take a minute. Uh, just let me see your hand. Otherwise, um, uh, uh, my only comment, spending a fair bit of time in various developing nations, is uh, they they do tend to end up with uh, infrastructure, which is a bit of the envy of the developed world. Uh, you come along later on, and you've got the great equipment and the great opportunities to to build um, some spectacular infrastructure in, in different countries. So it's yeah, it's it's impressive sort of uh, scale and size and approaches to things. I'd like to offer, just for the, for the three we've heard already, in the last few years we've had a global economic crisis going on. Mm -hmm. And I just wondered how uh, your governments have reacted to that. Here, uh, there was a lot of spending went into infrastructure specifically. Did the same thing happen in your countries? Or um, uh, what kind of reaction was there to the, the global economic crisis that's taken place with respect to infrastructure? Uh, global e uh, economic crisis made some impacts to, to Chinese economy. However, not significant. So we have more of the domestic issues. Moreover, according to worldwide experiments, allocating investment on inf infrastructure uh, is an effective way to create jobs and help domestic Yeah, uh, in terms of some uh, like uh, global uh, economic crisis, it's uh, also you know in terms of the of the some uh, like, uh, uh, environmental problems. So in uh, in the uh, Korea, uh, we are trying to, to reduce the some investment of for the like uh, some infrastructure investment, trying to to in, uh, to, re to reduce. That's why you know we trying to to uh, to build to to build uh, or from the building of the construction to the can be changed for the like uh, integration integration of the some management or so some reduce some like uh, so reduce some uh, production or something like that is going to be changed of the some concept that's why we just starting for the like uh, some smart grid program or something like that in terms of the some like uh, infrastructure even though it's uh, like uh, uh, he just, you know, like introduced some like railroads and uh, road construction, but uh, we are trying to, to reduce uh, like uh, railroads as well as uh, some road construction, something like that. We're trying to reduce uh, that. So, yeah, yeah, no, what was the yeah I guess at, yeah. A, at a sort of national level, mm -hmm. uh, there was a, a, a refocusing um, on projects which actually have a real economic mm -hmm. driver. So. Uh, some of our might be uh, policy guidelines sort of things, which before gave quite a strong um, environmental weighting, was eased up to say, you know what, as long as we're doing okay with the environment, we really want to focus on the things which are going to put us um, on a good economic track. Uh, at a more localised level, uh, uh, I was called in on a government